Hi, I'm Brent. Today we're going to do a video update to let you understand a bit about the background of what you need to be considering if you're doing an engine rebuild. And one of those things is it's very common for people to find an engine failure such as this where you've got a hole in the block. But the question is um, what you need to do to fix it. But more importantly is what actually caused it in the first place. Now sometimes you can do some investigations to try and work out what the original cause was. Um, but the number one thing is you don't want to go fixing it and then find you blow another engine up because you didn't fix the original cause of the failure. So what I'm going to do is talk about in the next couple of minutes is trying to do some investigation to help you summarise yourself if you're looking at some of these work um, and upgrades and repairs for your own engine or maybe a friend's car. And what I've got beside here is the EJ 2.5. This um, out of an MY10 STI. Originally, at some stages, had an aftermarket set of um, factory uh, forged pistons and rods, which is a common modification. Um, the owner of the car um, sold it. New owner has bought it, done a level of other mechanical modifications, and then it's, as you can see, punched a hole in the block. And what you can see here is the, uh, the crankshaft, which is this part here, and down the bottom there is the uh, bottom of the... Um, the Conrod, which if I move it a little bit, there you go, you can see it's still spinning on the crankshaft. The reason why it won't go over any further is because the top of the conrod where it's broken interferes with the counterbalances on the crankshaft. So if you look down inside the bore, and I'll just turn it over, there is the um, end of what is the bottom end of the broken part of the conrod, and you can see it's done all the damage on the bore. Pretty obvious the block's a throwaway. So what you can see here is then the top half of the piston and the top half of the conrod and again you can see it's pivoting okay given the fact that it's been through catastrophic engine failure on the uh, gudgeon pin uh, fairly normal it's a bit gritty but that's pretty typical and you can see at the top of the piston it's a bit dirty but there's no signs of um, uh, pitting no signs of um, ignition uncontrolled ignition or detonation this carbon is fairly normal so if you clean it back you can see the pistons in pretty good nick actually and if you look around the side of the skirt you can see there's no sign of ringland failures, just lots of bits of mechanical parts where the engine has obviously gone through a pretty hard life when it's failed. And you can see inside here where the bottom of the piston skirt has been damaged due to the failure of the rod. Now, the important thing that I want to talk about here is, is when a engine fails, normally you can see damage on the piston. If it's a piston failure, which happens first, or... Um, if it's a conrod failure, you can see down inside here, or if it's a bearing failure at the bottom. Now, the way to tell the difference is, is if it's a, a bearing failure, maybe you know, lack of oil, or over a period of time you have mechanical modified parts and the car damaged the bearings and eventually um, the bearing nipped up on the, con on the crankshaft or it consumed all the oil and then it ran low and then it seized the bottom of the conrod on the crankshaft as well. Now what happens in a situation like that, normally the conrod is no normally then complete, but it just smashes the hell out of everything because the conrod then comes up out of the block or you hear the big end bearing failure with the knocking noise of the factory um, bearings or the bearings that you've used have failed and you hear the knocking noise and then you stop driving the car. Now if you keep driving it or if it's a, a lock up of the bottom end bearing on the crankshaft, it'll seize and mechanically lock itself on the crank and the inertia of the, the crankshaft spinning will then basically try to yank the, the conrod out through the bottom of the bore and then punch it out through the block. But in this situation you can see that hasn't happened. We've got a, a swinging top half of the conrod here connected to the piston and we've got the swinging bottom half of the conrod connected to the crankshaft and I can quite easily put my hand in there and turn it over and if I took the time to, to pull this apart there's a pretty good chance that there's not going to be any sign of bearing damage. So the question is, what caused the conrod to fail? And there's a pretty good chance what's happened is the conrod at some period of time has bent. And we're talking not like that. We're talking about probably a very small amount because obviously the thrust on any conrod is axial. And in a mechanical situation, you want it to be as straight as possible because the load goes straight down through the top of the piston, the um, conrod or onto the crankshaft for mechanical efficiency. But if th that conrod starts to bend, what happens is over a period of time, it starts generating a weak spot and the bend starts fatiguing the, the metal and eventually what will happen is it'll fail completely and it'll do that. And in this situation, there's a pretty good chance that that's what's happened. So you say, well, what caused a good quality aftermarket conrod to fail, which is, I can tell you, it's not normal. 
and there's a pretty good chance that somewhere in the past maybe this engine has been over boosted or maybe um, the owner um, went through water and he got hydraulic the engine with water in it and then forced it and maybe uh, bump started it and towed it to get it started and it's bent the conrod who knows but the unfortunate thing is the owner of this vehicle driving the car with all these other mechanical goodies on it just driving the car one day down the freeway all of a sudden bang failure and these are the, some of the things that happen over a period of time and in his world he thinks he's done all the right things but of course nobody has a perfect crystal ball of what the cause of the real failure in the first place is other than the fact that the poor owner's now got a, a piece of metal here which is no good even for a boat anchor so when you get all this back together the important part is to try and work out what happened so of course when the engine gets rebuilt like this and you can see the engine is fresh and been put back together it's got a brand new bottom end it's got the tumble generator valve deletes it's got a fully serviced um, heads it's got a good air a good intake to a um an, a blast dom 3 turbo when it all goes back together with e-flex and everything else the owner of the car obviously wants to be reassured that he's got all the right bits and pieces to put it all back together and of course doesn't want to repeat the same process so of course when we do the rebuild we go through all this type of information to help guide him on what he shouldn't should do in the run-in process and looking after the car so the whole video that i want to talk about here is not focusing on the modifications as in the end result is taking as many steps backwards to try and work out what the beginning of the failure was in the first place so it doesn't get repeated so there you have it this is some of the things that we do when we're doing talking about engine rebuilds because you just got to think a little bit outside the square and try and work out what's happened so history doesn't repeat itself. For more technical tips and uh, updates, look forward to uh, sharing and commenting on this video. Um, go to our website and check out some of the other mods and of course, um, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe to us. We'd love to give you some more updates in the future, no matter where you are in the world. I really hope this video has helped you learn more about how to diagnose um, history on your car. Hopefully you haven't suffered this, but you will avoid it in the future. But for today, my name is Brett Middleton. Thanks for watching.